Don't forget to check out the new shirts on our website celebrating our 300th episode of All About. Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. Today we have a new top 5 fish and we're going to go with a 120 gallon tank today. Now we're getting into the big leagues here with this size. This is going to give you a lot of room to make really cool rock structures, stock it with a lot of different fish and inverts, and if you wanted to go the reef route, you'll have plenty of space for these corals to grow. Typical 120 is going to be about 4 feet in length, 2 in width, and about 2 feet in height. This can vary between the shape of tank you actually get. Some can be more square, giving you a larger width, and others can be more rectangle, giving a longer length. It depends on which route you'd like to go. Heck, some people are even still getting the ones that are curved on the front. Now, it's going to be more expensive to start a 120. Of course, you got to have more water to put in, more sand, more pounds of live rock, and a bigger filter, typically a sump. But with the width of this tank you get with the 120, that's where you really win, in my opinion. It's going to allow you to make some awesome caves, some caverns for your fish to explore, and really good arches that can't be happening and smaller tanks that only will give you about eight inches to a foot in width. So, what is my top five fish that I'd recommend in a 120 saltwater fish tank? At number one, we got the powder blues. Powder blue tanks have some incredible colors on them. They were a hot seller whenever I worked at the fish store. Everybody loved them, everybody wanted them in the tank. They're a nice, hardy tank. They're one that's gonna be always out in the open swimming crazily around the tank with a bunch of energy. Powder Blue needs at least a 120 to grow because they are going to eventually get up to 9 inches in length by adulthood. This tank is going to acquire a lot of algae in their diet in order to keep those colors bright, their health up, and keep those unwanted diseases and pests off of them. Having some natural algae in the aquarium can be a big plus when first introducing them. Sometimes they can be a bit shy at the beginning, so having multiple different food choices is a great plan to start out with. Have mysis, spirulina, brine, any of those frozen cubes are good for their diet. Get some dry seaweed too that you can put on a clip in the tank as well. And of course, like I said, having that natural algae, you even have like some micro algae you could put in there. They would eat that stuff up. Once they get adjusted to the tank setting though, they will most definitely become the king and queens of the tank. So this can be a good thing, sometimes can be a bad thing. So they're going to guard their territory to newcomers. So if you plan on mixing more than one tang in the tank, I'd recommend trying to add them at the same time. And when adding tangs, you usually try to go for a different body shape. This one has that oval rounded body shape, so you wouldn't want to mix them with a powder brown. But if you went for something like a Tomini that had that long rectangle shape, you'd be good on that. Adding them at the same time just really helps avoid aggression and then fighting over that territory. Compatibility wise with other things, the powder blue can go with just about anyone. Small reef fish like clowns and gobies are great and even bigger fish like angels, puffers, and wrasse are great too. The second one I'm gonna recommend is antheas. Antheas can be a really good choice for this size aquarium. Antheas are very sensitive to the water parameters so having a larger aquarium can help avoid a spike from happening as they are more likely to become a problem faster in a smaller gallon aquarium. Antheas are also one of the most active fish you can get in this hobby. They swim nonstop out in the open, darting back and forth, chasing each other through the rocks, and even some will be swimming constantly into the power heads, catching the wave. With them being so active, they need to be fed multiple times a day, small portions too. They won't be able to just feed on one big portion a day. It's never worked out in my experience. Small portions, three to four times a day, has always worked out best. Now that can be hard when you have to go to work, so definitely get an automatic fish feeder. They can throw them some pellets and flakes during the morning times, and then in the afternoon you can get something more meaty like brine shrimp. When getting antheas, you'll want to get at least a group of three or five or more. One male and the remaining being females. Two males in a group will always lead to fighting and aggression, so you don't want that. And what's even crazier is they're hermaphrodites, so if the male is to perish, the largest female will actually become the male of the pack, so it's pretty cool. Antheas typically do best in seasoned reef tanks with a dense rock structure. They're known to even eat pods as well, so if you have a good amount of those already in your reef, that's just another thing helping take care of your antheas. 
At number three, I'm going to give it to the copper band butterfly fish. This butterfly fish is one of the most well-known ones in the saltwater hobby. They have some very pretty colors from the orange and white stripes going down its body. The long snout that sticks out. I mean, once you see one, you obviously know exactly what it is. Copper bands can eventually get up to 8 inches in length and should be kept as the only butterfly fish in the aquarium of this size. It's known to show aggression towards other butterflies and you definitely don't want that. One thing to note about the copper band, they can be very tricky when it comes to getting them acclimated into the tank. Feeding is the first issue. They can be very picky about what they want to eat. So make sure to have a variety of frozen meaty foods for them to try. I've always had really good luck feeding blood worms to the butterfly fish. I don't know why, but they've always seemed to love those. Of course, keep some mysis, frill, brine, all sorts of other flavors that you can get out there. Get a lot of them, get a lot of different ones for them to try and eat when first introducing them to the tank. The second issue that you'll really run into is them being very shy. So make sure you're putting them in a tank with other very peaceful fish. Aggression from fish like a trigger or a larger angel that's just dominant over the tank will just cause this butterfly to hide for the majority of time in the aquarium. Copper bands are going to use that long snout to look for food in the small cracks and holes of the rock structure so it can be really fun watching them swim around the tank looking for that. Be cautious if adding them into your reef tanks as they can harm your inverts like anemones and your other creatures like cocoa worms and feather dusters. But other than that, your LPS, SPS corals will do you just fine. The fourth one I'm going to recommend is the green mandarin goby. Mandarins are incredible. They look stunning. They have so many colors on them and the way it looks like a maze is so pretty. When they flare their fins too, you get a hit of that bright red coloration on the end. Their fins that they swim with are this dark, dark blue. Their body is mixed with browns, greens, blues, and this zigzag pattern over them. It's just super pretty. The males tend to have a much larger top fin and will also just be larger in size overall. And they tend to have just better colors on them. My favorite thing about putting a mandarin in a tank this large is if you have guests over that are looking at your tank and they're already amazed by it, but whenever that mandarin comes out from the rocks, people will freak. So the key thing with mandarins is they eat copepods. It's the main meal throughout their life. You'll do best to have a seasoned reef tank because a tank like that will already have a good supply of pods. But you'll want to make sure that supply does not dwindle down. There are a few ways to do this. One is to buy bottles of pods and pour them into the tank for the mandarin to eat. That's an easy way to do it. There also can raise pods in your sump or refugium. They love to grow and reproduce in a bunch of chato down there at the bottom. That way they get sucked into the filter, blown out into the tank, and the process just keeps repeating itself. That can be a really good idea for them. If you have a smaller tank that does not have a refugium that you can't do that, don't fret. In my 55 gallon that I used to have, I would put a chunk of chato and I would just shove it in the back of my rock structure in the corner and then I would pour a bottle of the pods in there. That way it gave it the best chance for them to get in there and reproduce before the mandarins came and you know pretty much ate them up throughout the month. Mandarins can be trained to eat meaty foods like mysa shrimp. It's a rare occurrence, but you can definitely find videos of them doing it. I would definitely still try to feed them other meaty foods. That way, in case they do end up eating that, oh, it's a game changer to taking care of them. Mandarins need to be with other very peaceful fish, or they're going to be too scared to come out into the open. So put them with your clownfish, your small gobies, your little wrasse that are just going to be hanging out and not causing trouble to each other. You can also have a mated pair together in the tank. So if you do end up having more than one mandarin, just realize that you're going to have more pods that need to be into the, in the tank for them to eat. Even more amazing thing is they have been successfully captive breeding these mandarins, so you can actually get one that was raised here. And the last one I'm going to give you all to look at for your 120 is a marine beta. This is a different one to give your tank some flair. They look like the galaxy you're looking up at the night sky. They are super pretty, and these baiters are going to get pretty large, about 8 inches in length by adulthood. They aren't a very active swimmer. They're usually just floating in one general area looking around, and then they'll dart to another spot and hang out there. So they are usually swimming in a tilted position as well as a little hunting trick because their tail is going to resemble the eye of an eel and will confuse the prey thinking it's not even looking at them when really it's staring directly at them. So it's pretty cool. They are a carnivore that's going to be eating meaty food in their diet. 
Best we ever did was thaw shrimp out, raw shrimp from the grocery store. You could thaw it out and shave off a couple pieces of it. And then you could put it on a little skewer and tease the beta bouncing it around the tank. If I have any fishermen out there, it's like teasing a bass and a worm. You're just trying to get them over there to eat it up. Same way you try to feed your lionfish at the beginning whenever you're trying to hand feed them with those little skewers. Sometimes they aren't into it. As long as you can tease them enough to make it look like live food, they'll come after it. Once you get them to that point, they'll love it. It keeps them full. And while they are reef safe, they're not going to mess with any of your corals, but they have been known to eat shrimp and other smaller fish that can fit in its mouth. So always keep that in mind if you are one to add one to your reef. It's great colors to add to the reef, but if you're somebody that's a big fan of like fire shrimp, cleaner shrimp, even the little sexy shrimp, this guy's going to see them as snacks. Make sure to have a dense rock structure with a lot of caves and overhangs. They are a nocturnal fish in the wild, so you'll usually see them swimming under that overhang looking for its next meal. They'll come out a little bit, and then they'll be back down swimming in there. Early mornings and late afternoons will be the best time to feed them. If you are having trouble getting them to eat, go for a live food like a ghost shrimp is a really easy one. That's what we used to feed all the time to our lionfish that weren't big on eating from us yet. Put those in there, I promise you he'll chase them down. You can really put them with any other fish. They're not so much of an aggressive fish, but of course, watch out for smaller ones like a little chromie will probably get eaten. Or a little cleaner shrimp, like I said, probably get eaten. But if you put them with angels, you know, wrasse, tangs, clowns, all green marks across the board for those. And that hits our top five great choices for you to go out there, giving you some new ideas, just something new to add to the tank. Thanks everyone for coming by to watch this new episode of All About. If you have another fish in this tank size, please leave it down in the comments and let us know how it's doing in there. That's going to help somebody look it up and check it out for themselves in case these five didn't really hit their spot. I can promise you, look in those comments, somebody else will recommend something else and you'll want to get that one. Also, if you have any additional questions, leave a comment down below. Reach out to me on social media. I'm always open to sharing my ideas and helping y'all out in this hobby. If you want a more detailed look at these five fish, of course, go to my All About series. They're all out there. You can get a deep dive of each one of these. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Hope y'all have a good weekend.